Okay, so um, I'm going to tell you about a polynomials today. Uh, I should just mention that uh, the character variety of uh, the free group on two generators is C3, um, and uh, all the three variables are just free. So it's as an algebra executive, that's some of these. Um, so So let me just uh, describe again another uh, form for the character variety of z plus z because we will use this a lot to uh, define the a polynomial. So let g be z plus z and I want to uh, uh, look at a, a different model for the character variety. It's not a, a algebra like as we saw before but it's useful in this. Um, and what we are going to do today. So uh, let delta be diagonal representations uh, of z to z. So I'm going to use m and l for the eigenvalues of the meridian and longitude. Um, so this belongs to c star cross c star and um, we can define a map from delta. So this is, uh, note that this is the same as c star cross c star. And now we can send this representation to its character. So point here ML goes to M plus 1 upon M, L plus 1 upon M. And this map is a generically one, 2 to 1 map. Uh, because 1 upon M, 1 upon L go to the same number. Uh, it is generally 2 to 1 and not 4 to 1 because if you switch m and 1 by m, you are switching the bases. So this also gets switched. So you cannot just switch 1 and leave the other in there. You have to switch 4. But think of it as just a choice of the, of the eigenvalue. You can either take it or it's a reciprocal. So now, if you take any representation, who has said to see? So you have two to one except one minus one or something. That that's right. So generically two to one, and uh, so not at all points, but at uh, uh, it's two to one on a dense subset uh, in the sense of algebra um, itself. And so if you have a representation, you can again uh, conjugate it. So, so conjugate this to again the same trick. Um, so, so conjugate to and and so you can see that. Uh, since every representation can be conjugated like this, uh, you have these representations. The first matrix. Uh, the bottom right hand matrix. Uh, the first matrix. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, so, that, so these are actually catching, getting all the characters. Yeah. So, so we are we are we are covering basically most of uh, uh, most of the character variety. But this map is not, but but note that delta is actually C star plus C star, it's not an algebraic set. It's not an algebraic set. So it's kind of a little weird that we are trying to trying to look at the character variety here with something which is not algebraic. But you'll see in a moment you can you can take closures and you, th things things will be uh, algebraic. In fact, you can think of the character variety of z cross z as 
C star cross C star with exactly the involution which takes m to 1 by m and l to 1 by m. So it's, it's, it's exactly the functions on which this is invariant. So this is, so tilde is involution taking both at the same time. Uh, okay, so now, why is this uh, important? That is because now we are going to be in the situation that M is a three manifold and boundary of M is a torus. And so we choose basis M, say, Um, and now this sits inside M and that gives us um, an inclusion from the boundary of M to uh, from the on the fundamental groups and this induces a restriction map from the character variety. So if you have a representation here, it's going to you're going to get a representation. <laughs> This gives you a restriction map. So what I want to say is, before I define the a-polynomial, uh, the way to think about the a-polynomial is, you take z plus z, and the character variety of z plus z is something like c star plus c star. You can pull back characters to c star plus c star. And so it's two-dimensional. And you want to look at representations which extend inside the inside from the peripheral subgroup. So you're getting representations of, of the of the boundary in S L to C, and you want to see which representations extend into the three manifold. And that restriction, the, that condition gives you a restriction on C cross C, and it happens to be a polynomial restriction, and that polynomial is the A polynomial. So so what we are going to do is, we are going to have C star cross C star here, and we take, so you, you, you push down things from here, and that will give you represent our characters in, in the, ca the character variety of Z plus Z, uh, which extend into the manifold. That's, that gives you a polynomial factor. So we'll see how the, how the polynomial comes up. This is in C star C. So yes. Yeah. So yeah, we have to take closures before we can talk about the polynomial. So is it in, is the character variety in C cross C then? Not the, the restriction. Uh, this one? You said it's defined by a polynomial. Yeah, yeah, the polynomial is here. We are going to go down and pull it back over here. How long have you been? It's in C cross C. So, yeah. Even though that's C star cross so, C. We are going to take closures before we take the polynomial. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll just give the definition of it. Yeah. So, now you take S uh, to be equal to all the components of the character variety of M uh, such that. Uh, when you push, when you take the restriction of that, it, it goes down to um, a one-dimensional object, this component and dimension of R of Y is equal to one. So otherwise, you may hit all of all of this. So we don't want to do that. And now you, you define the curve D M to be equal to the union uh, you can take closure here and this set is inside C star plus C star and it's not really clear uh, whether this is an algebraic set because T delta is not an algebraic map it has a denominator um, 
And so the claim is that dm bar is an algebraic set. N c cross c is an algebraic set. Um, Uh, there is another way to uh, see the see this. So there is a there is a straightforward way to see this, which is to use the trick which we used during the example session uh, to to write an R prime of n in the representation variety such that you take a representation and you conjugate it. So so R prime of n is all representations such that uh, uh, on the fundamental uh, on the peripheral subgroup it looks like this. And um, any generic representation Representation can be conjugated, can be conjugated to be in a prime of n. So, in 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 the sense that this is this is basically conjugating representations and coming down not to exactly the character variety, but almost a double cover of the character variety. Exactly the similar sort of thing we did, and now you can. Um, you can define a map. Now everything is algebraic. This is an algebraic current. This is an algebraic set. Um, this is an algebraic set. And now we can define the map psi uh, to be. If you take a representation, it just goes to the eigenvalues m and n, and the eigenvalue map is also algebraic. So everything is now algebraic work. Here and then we do exactly the same thing. Uh, we look at we look at the closure of this set in C cross C and this is now an affine algebraic set. Um, uh, we should have two at my for each and more which one you choose? Ah, so that, that's a good question. I'm going to take M, I mean you can think of the matrices explicitly and choose a upper rightmost entry and that's an algebraic map. Uh, but but the, the, there's a choice to make and that choice will arise as a symmetry of the A polynomial. I'll, I'll tell you how that comes up. Yes. But, but, but yes, we are making a choice. But eventually the choice won't affect anything because uh, it will arise as a, it will give a symmetry of the equal. When you picked S, were you uh, on the earlier construction, were you making a choice? Or? Uh, no, no, we are, we are just choosing the components. Uh, 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 we are not choosing the, we are basically throwing away the components which are surjective or uh, which which take up entirely of you. We are, we are only uh, we are throwing, throwing away. So that's components? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Um, so now, the, the key point uh, is that an irreducible algebraic set n c cross c or an, I should say an algebraic curve n c cross c is the zero set zero set of a polynomial and um, the, the reason is that I mean the ideal associated with this Curve, this this algebraic set is principal. So the ideal is principal. And so now we can define the A polynomial <coughs> with 
where where C i m l is uh, the the polynomial of components of either d m bar or uh, this object, whichever of dimension one. Uh, where CM is a polynomial of components of dimension 1 and the product is taken over all components and product is taken over all such components. So, um, let me make a couple of remarks about normalizations and then I will tell you some a few properties of the problem. So, um, any questions? So we have, okay, so we have uh, the knot, we remove it, that gives us M. We do this construction to get, what is DM bar again? Yeah. DM bar is? Yeah, it's a closure of the set. Yeah. The closure of some set. So our, our product is, or the components, that's because. Okay. Yeah. And then, what does it mean to be the polynomial of a component? Uh, it's it's the it's the polynomial uh, uh, of which the component is a zero set of. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Can you just maybe you're planning to do this, but, um, just the solid torus? Yeah, I'm I'm going to do the unknown. Yeah. Let me just make a couple of. Um, uh, since this is a, a, a CI of ML is a is a generator of an ideal, it's well defined of the units. So so this is a prior that is well defined uh, up to multiplication uh, by L to the power A to the power B. Um, and now, so then we can choose a few normalizations. So you can choose, um, so, so normalization one. Sir, and a constant also multiplication by? Uh, and a constant, yeah. Oh. Um, So we can choose choose A and B, choose A B such that um, A of M L is equal to A of 1 by M and 1 by L. So you see that if you take 1 by N and 1 by L, they also have to be elements on the M because as, as someone uh, pointed out, it's a, it's a choice of the eigenvalue. You can change that as either M or either one by m. So if m and are on the curve, then one upon m and one upon l are also on the curve. So you can just you can you can choose the normalization such that um, it is symmetric, uh, and you can choose the constant so that they have integer coefficients, and choose constant uh, to get integer polynomial. Uh, this is this can always be done. It's not. It needs a proof, but uh, um, you are doing, you are, you are, you are reducing and eliminating all equations which have integer coefficients. I thought this was a polynomial. Yeah, well, now we get a Laurent polynomial. It's a polynomial in the sense of Alexander polynomial, like that. So it's a, it's a, so, so in this case, we, it's going to be a Laurent polynomial. Um, is Laurent polynomial a symmetric about origin? Um, and there is a second normalization 
And the second normalization is you choose a b so that um, it's a polynomial of minimal total length. So choose a b uh, so that a m l is polynomial, not a Laurent polynomial, just a polynomial of minimal total length. Um, for most of the things which we do, um, it, it doesn't matter which normalization you use. Uh, there is another issue, which is the choice of the basis. Um, and so, the polynomial does depend on the choice of the basis. And so, if m is s three, if it's a, if m is a not complement, then you can choose the canonical basis, and then it's well defined without mentioning the basis. Just uh, That's right. It's, it is just a normalization. That's right. The variety is defined uh, uh, by my, uh, up to multiplication of L to the power A and to the power B. It is exactly like in the Alexander polynomial. It's a, it's, it's a, the polynomial is the generator of an ideal, and the the polynomial uh, it's it's a polynomial. But then when you normalize, you can write it so that it's a symmetric but object. It's possible you're losing something in normalization, which might start with a variety that goes to zero. Yeah. And then when oh, oh, but, but, but when you normalize, you have not... Um, Multiplied by L introduces a zero, and L equals zero. Uh, well, it, it doesn't pass through zero, zero. It has an eigenvalue of SL to symmetry. You cannot have a zero. No. Oh, yeah, then it's an ideal point. And then, so so whenever you're taking closures and whenever you're looking at the <coughs> algebraic geometry, then you will have to work with the projective closures, uh, the, 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 the closure of the variety in in uh, uh, C three two. Yeah. And take its power to find polynomial. It's a well-defined polynomial up to multiplication by a constant. Yes. And so, could that change the variety by multiplying by a gap? Uh, yes. Uh, so, um, so this is just a way you want to write it. You don't. You can just take the polynomial as it comes up. It never passes to zero, zero. So you are not never going to get L A and M to the power B. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it it does is it, it does depend upon the choice of the basis of of your of pyron of boundary of M. Uh, so uh, but if it's a not complement, you can take the canonical <coughs> take the canonical basis. Of meridian and the canonical logic. Uh, so, if, if you're say, for example, if you're doing computation, say with snappy, and if you have a snappy manifold, and you're computing the a polynomial for that, you have to look at what m and l are, uh, what 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 meridian and longitude snappy is choosing, and that will that that will your answer will change accordingly. So, you, you need to be careful when. Um, um, okay, so so let us look at some properties and examples. The first example is if k is the unknown, and so then your s three minus k is just equal to. Uh, Z and the we saw that the representation variety uh, is now 
this is your r prime and you are mapping it to c cross c and so this point is going to go to m and l is just the identity how about the longitude just goes to 1 so that's the that's um, that's where it maps to so your your image of xi is just c cross 1 and this is given by the equation of l minus 1 the equation of this curve of the, the equation on this curve is just l minus 1 equal to 0 so the a polynomial of the unknown is l minus 1 and now since all the naught groups are billionized to z uh, you are going to get this factor in the a polynomial of all uh, for all knots so so since phi 1 of s3 minus k abelianizes to z of l minus 1 to the factor of a, a, and l for all k. So many times when you see an A polynomial, they usually ignore the L minus one facts. So then they'd say the A polynomial of the unknot is one. Uh, if you ignore the fact that L minus one, then it, yeah. I don't see how you can make that symmetric uh, by multiplying by L and L of the A. Or is it just symmetric up to it? Maybe it's symmetric. You have to divide the root by L minus 1 to make it symmetric. But you're, you're not going to get any other Z coins? <laughs> you square blocks. Uh, you shouldn't have. <laughs> yeah, you use the square root. Yeah. Do you, do you have to divide through by L minus one first to make it symmetric? Oh, uh, I'm, I'm completely guessing well, here. Well, then you, you never get any. Well, uh, this I, small. I think that the basic uh, idea is that uh, if you if you look at for the abelian representations, uh, the eigenvalue of the longitude is always one. Uh, so, so uh, if m and one minus m will both do belong here, l and one minus l really uh, let me think about it. Maybe you have to divide through by l minus one. I was just going to think that you could also use the trace. Uh, that you can use the trace and probably get a different type of polynomial. The trace is invariant. I mean, yeah. in one of the things is invariant. You can get C. It's only one of the things that I was Uh, no, I think I think the 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 this this symmetry it, it probably not a normalization but a property. I may have just confused myself, and it, it may have it, it it may be equal uh, up to a multiplication of this. Yeah, that that that's what, and that will make sense. So probably. Probably it's not a normalization. It's maybe not a normalization, but a property that this actually has. 
it is it is definitely true that uh, since the choice of eigenvalues, you can take either m or one by m. Uh, uh, a of 1 upon m and 1 upon l uh, would give you the same variety. You're, you're getting the same. You're getting the same algebraic curve. Uh, so, so if you if you look at the torus norm, Yeah, I think that's about. Let me clear it up. Uh, so if you if you look at a torus not P P Q, uh, then you can use the presentation. Uh, and now you can explicitly write down the meridian and longitude. Uh, in this presentation, so you can choose M and N such that NP plus NQ is equal to 1 and now you can write down the meridian as and the longitude as X to the power P times the meridian to the power minus P and what happens is if you look at this relation, then this relation uh, uh, seen on R prime of N gives you uh, a relation on the eigenvalues, gives the relation relation L is equal to well X m to the power minus pq and so you can you can get uh, the polynomial plus 1 as a factor of the a polynomial and in fact Okay, I can't stop thinking about it. I think I think what it it, it is is a m l is uh, uh, is equal to a one by m one by l times some factor over here. So you can normalize so that it's actually you can write it so that it's always symmetric over the origin. I think this implies that you can just choose it so that it's always symmetric over the origin. Just for writing that. Yes. Okay, this is definitely true. But now I'm I'm confused about this. So. Okay, so so the fact is if you have a torus knot you can write down the a polynomial explicitly as there are no no more factors other than l minus one. So, and this is uh, this is not obvious to show that there are no more factors. It was both, and I forget which paper has proved it, or maybe it is some. But the fact that it's equal and there are no more factors to take some work. Um, the third example is, if you have is M is a, a complete finite volume of one cusp. Orientable hyperbolic thing. So the boundary uh, you can think of M as a closure of a manifold whose uh, you can think of M as 
the interior of a manifold whose boundary is a torus, so you can uh, and so the, the the result for this is that the a polynomial of this manifold is non-trivial. It's not equal to L minus one, and this follows uh, because of the non-triviality of the character variety. If you look at the component x naught of M, which is the component containing the discrete the trace of the discrete faithful representation, which we saw yesterday, we saw that this was this has dimension one. Moreover, uh, uh, the if, if you look at the trace function of any peripheral element, the trace function of the peripheral element is non-constant on this component. So 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 I gamma, uh, which is basically trace of rho of gamma, is a non-constant function. Constant function on x naught for gamma to be in the peripheral sub. And the reason for this is again the deformation theory of hyperbolic structures. If you if you uh, 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 think uh, about your completeness and glowing equations and the completeness equations, uh, the, the fact that the completeness equation uh, is equal to one. That is just saying that the that the representation is parabolic. And what's the parabolic representation? Uh, the the peripheral group is parabolic, so it is acting via translations. And what does that mean? Well, parabolic elements have eigenvalues one. So that that and to say that you can deform the structure, uh, it means that your pa your peripheral subgroup goes to non-parabolic elements, which means that your eigenvalues are changing, they are not the same. And that means that eigenvalues are changing as the trace is changing, that means this is a non-constant function. Why that is important is because because this is non-constant for any peripheral element, let's take the Merino on the, on the longitude, the eigenvalues are non-constant and so when you when you uh, uh, project this down to your character variety of the boundary, you are getting something non-trivial. You, you cannot get L equal to 1. Your L has to Yes. With respect to this thing, are you, do you think about symmetry about uh, in M? I think it's symmetric in M. No, I, I, I think it is. Uh, I think this is true of two powers. For the trefoil, it's like one plus plus L plus M to six. I think it's symmetry in the six. Let me check on that. <laughs> Okay, so um, we we have already that the a polynomial is non-trivial for a lot of knots. Uh, a recent result says that it actually detects the unknot. So a k of m l is not equal to l minus one if k is not the unknot. So a polynomial detects the unknot. Um, and uh, th this follows from a deep theorem of Kronheimer and Broca, which says, uh, which proves the existence of non irreducible representations in SU2, which you, from which you can get irreducible representations in SL2, and hence the non trivialty of the equal. So it's it's not, it is not something which happens. Uh, in the in, in in using topological method, it's something coming from PhD. So um, is, is that specific for S three? Uh, yes, yes, it is specific for S. Um, K and K bar 
cognitive emotions. Well, then a k of is equal to two powers a k bar of n times one by l, and uh, this follows because if you take the mirror image, you can reverse the orientation on the of the longitude, and and so your your curve d of m, if it has m, it will also have m of one by l. So it's again a very similar argument. So if you reverse the orientation of l or m, your eigen your your uh, eigen value will, will switch from l to one. Um, so let me. Uh, there's one more property which says that if you have a not complement, uh, it contains only even powers. And then only even powers. And this follows because. You have an involution. So if you, if you take this, so your meridian goes to one, and that goes to uh, this map plus or minus one. So this will go to minus one. Um, and this will give you an involution on the representation variety. So if you if you can if you can think of you just multiply it by negative one. You just take a representation and multiply it by negative one, and that will that's going to switch your eigenvalue of m to minus m. And so again, you have the curve where you have m l and minus m l. So hence, you are going to have even powers of m. Your example, you cannot you cannot. Yes. Yes. Let me think about it. <laughs> I'm really sorry. Uh, the, the, the problem is normalization. I'm not, I'm not getting a no correct normalization. So, so, so when you keep writing polynomials, you have a lot of, you, you write it. Uh, we'll see what happens is the, the thing which you're really interested in, which is, I'll just describe in a moment, is a Newton polygon. It does not matter how you with the normalization and, and that so I'll, I'll 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 answer all of the questions tomorrow. Good, good. Thank, thank you for pointing that out. And this one keep you as odd. So if you normalize by time m some power, still some some then odd and some e. So yes you yeah you, you will yes so you, you can always normalize it, but yeah, as I said, there is, there is, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm missing something. Uh, okay, so let me, let me get to this property, which is uh, the Newton polygon. So if you have a polynomial, uh, 
the Newton polygon of A is the convex hull of the set of PQ where the coefficient APQ is non-zero. So for example, if your polynomial is say 1 plus x plus y, then your Newton polygon is just this one. Let's say if you have your Then your Newton polygon looks like zero. manifold and you have a surface in a three manifold such that its, its boundary is sitting inside the boundary of the manifold. Um, you have the boundary to be the torus. Then you can define uh, the slope of this surface which is the curve. Um, so, so you have this boundary the, it's a closed curve on the on, on, on the torus, so you can you can write this in terms of the meridian and the longitude, and so you can define a slope p by q. So the boundary slope of S. is pure. So here you're, you're assuming that S has boundary? Ah, uh, yes, yes. So that it has to be not. Yes. And so the, the big theorem which connects uh, the representation theory and the color shading theory to the A polynomial is that uh, the slopes of the sides of the Newton polygon of the A polynomial are boundary slopes of income reasonable surfaces. So let me, let, let me write that. The slopes, so you have, a, you have the A polynomial and you have the Newton polygon and these have sides. So the slopes of sides of the Newton polygon of the A polynomial are boundary slopes of incompressible surfaces in Uh, these these surfaces correspond to correspond to the ideal points of this curve D N of the A polynomial. So let me just say a couple of words on the proof of this. Um, Since we saw some glimpse or sketch of color change theory of how what, what ingredients it uses, uh, so this is what uh, 
happens for, 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 for this here. Uh, you have, if you look at some curve, some, some component of the a-polynomial curve, and since you are, you are looking at irreducible, uh, well, um, so, so you, you have this, so you have this y sitting in dn, this is going on to say some y1 sitting in over here, and then you can pull it back to the character of the right. So you have a, so, um, but we, we are not going to pull ideal points around. If you have an ideal point here, well you get a valuation on some field. So what, what happens is if you look at the function field, this is the function field of y, uh, your function field of y1 uh, is sitting in the function field of y because if you have a function from over here, you get a function from here. And similarly, uh, it is sitting inside function field of y2. So, what happens with valuation? So, these are just all fields. So, these are field extensions. And the field extensions are just the degree of these maps, which are all finite degrees. These are the finite extensions, field extensions. And so if you have a valuation here, you can pull back the valuation here and extend this valuation over here. So what, what happens is that uh, an ideal point, so okay, I want to, I'm going to draw another schematic. What, why, is, why is a surface or, or why is a component of the and so the top line, why can it be a word, why and dm? Uh, dm is the curve uh, which is defined by the a polynomial, which is the zero set of the a polynomial, and you take a component in it. So you okay. just take a factor and it will do that. The, the reason you need irreducible components is because you want to talk about functional fields. So you need you need you need it to be irreducible. And so so what happens is if you have an ideal point of dm. Uh, you can you can get from that evaluation on the function field. Well, that is not uh, that much of a use because we have seen that to, to do the to for to use the curvature theory, you need to reach the character variety. So so because of this sort of extension, so you restrict and extend the evaluation. You can actually get so restrict and extend. Uh, so you can get a valuation, valuation on C on, on a component of the character variety. So this is in. So now you are in the character variety. And so now, once you have a valuation on the on a, on a curve in the character variety, then you can do the color shield in theory. And now you can get essential surface. Or incompressible surfaces. In, in. But now here is the uh, key observation: is that this is not talking about just ideal points of dn. There is something extremely combinatorial about it. It's actually the slope of the sides of the Newton polygon. And Newton polygon is a if you if you are given a polynomial, it's a completely combinatorial object. But it contains a lot of algebra ge of, uh, of geometric information. For example, if, if you have the right conditions, then the number of uh, 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 lattice points inside the Newton polygon is related to the genus of the curve. In the unique smoothness conditions and so on. So this Newton polygon is actually it's quite a quite an interesting algebraic geometric object. So so. So to, to, to relate it to the Newton polygon, what we have is, if you have a slope of a side of the Newton polygon, you can get, you can get an ideal point of dn and, and also 
related to a valuation on C of Y. And this the this construction goes through uh, what are called Pusage parameterizations. So you take and you you so what happens is the is is the the uh, there's a curve on the boundary which really which is the boundary uh, curve and that that curve uh, somehow the valuation of that curve is exactly uh, what we want it to be because of the slope of the uh, Newton polygon and this is not that this part is not that very difficult you just you take an ideal one you write down the uh, uh, the Pusa parameterization and then you can see the valuation but but that is that is the key connection to the Newton polygon, and so so let's let's uh, uh, see why why a polynomial is uh, is is nice is we we saw character where it is yesterday and we saw some computations today in the afternoon, and you can write down the character variety say even for a two bridge node just in simplest case the figure eight now. And you know these ideal points that correspond to essential surfaces, but if I give you the equation, you cannot do anything. If I give you the equation of the character variety and ask you, well, can you see the essential surface? Can you compute any information about that? And you really cannot do anything with the with just the character variety equation. But now, if I give you the A polynomial, which is not, which is just the one step away computation from the character variety, it's actually for two is not. It's exactly the same amount of computation uh, as the character variety. Now you can just you you get the a polynomial. You can write down the Newton polygon, look at the slopes, and those are that's explicit information. So that's that's a very deep theory. Here you went to a component of the character variety. Yeah. But here you're looking at the Newton polygon. yeah. You look at the Newton polygon uh, of of the uh, of that factor of the. I think there is a way how the Newton polygons behave up if you just combine them together. Is that here and different only? Oh, oh no, no, good question. Yeah, I'm just going to no, no, it's not different only. Yeah. Uh, so, so there are. Um, so because everything of, of, of this is coming from the character variety, if you have a boundary slope of essential surface which is not detected by the character variety. You can never find it at the A polynomial level. So uh, there are slopes, there are examples where there are slopes which are not detected by the character variety or the A polynomial. So, so not all boundary slopes. Are detected uh, by by the character variety. And there are uh, uh, examples given by Stefan Tilman on this. And the example uh, is, is a really uh, nice way to generate examples. Uh, you look at, uh, he, he looks at two forced and transit knots. And uh, one of which is a mutation of the other. And uh, you can show, and uh, actually even Stefan showed that the character variety is invariant under mutation. So what happens is, uh, if you have different boundary slopes for these two muted, muted knots, then you cannot find those boundary slopes in the character variety because character variety is mutation in way, and hence you cannot get it on the on the apple. So it's a, it's a very nice observation. Um, and oh, I'm already out of time. So. Okay, so so tomorrow I will say something about uh, the Alexander polynomial and the A polynomial and I'll, I'll clear all the questions which I couldn't answer, I'll answer all the questions which I couldn't answer today and uh, we'll see computations and if I get time I'll connect it to the geometries. So thank you.
Thanks. Any questions? Yes. In general, can you get very many polynomials as a polynomial? Are there further restrictions? I mean, we were looking at things at oh, constant coefficients. There are lots of coefficients. Okay. So yeah, the, they end up very nice. They are they are very uh, restricted terms. In particular, so polynomials. Right. So in particular, they have plus or minus ones. The Newton polygons, the corners of the Newton polygons, uh, the coefficients are plus or minus okay. one. Uh, what there's something called the X polynomial of a Newton polygon. If you if you look at the Newton polygon and if you look at any edge, you can uh, because the slopes they have because X to the power of Q, Y to the power of Q, P divided by Q uh, has the same slope. You can you can rewrite it as a one variable polynomial along the edge. And all the one variable polynomials, all uh, all the edge polynomials are cyclic on. Then there is a there's a volume form which is exact on the A polynomial curve. So there are lots of restrictions. Do you get uh, do you get points inside the convex hull, or are all points located on the outside? No, no, you get, you get points. Are there? Do you have a reference for this? Oh, theorem? yes, I should. I Thank you for asking that question. Um, the, 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 there are a, a few very nice references for all, uh, the color Shalen theory and um, and the Apollon Draper. Uh, Shalen's notes um, is a very nice reference for the color Shalen theory. This is, uh, I think, chapter 3. Um, in the handbook of knot theory. I think it is chapter 3. Um, the A polynomial paper is called plain curves um, associated to the representations something. something. It is by five authors CCGLS and it appeared in Invention is uh, in 1993. Now the five authors are Cooper, Color, Long, and Shane. Um, and then there are um, a couple of papers. Uh, by Cooper and Long on the A polynomial and on the properties of the A polynomial. I forget their names, but if you just do a maths and it search on Cooper and Long, uh, you'll get a lot of papers, but you'll be able to figure out which are the A polynomials. So, uh, two more papers, two or three maybe papers uh, by Cooper and Long. Uh, And uh, for the color Shalen theory, the original paper of, of by color and Shalen, uh, which is uh, character varieties, you remember the. So you, you are you are taking <laughs> 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 uh, I think I think varieties of group representation. Uh, but again, this is a uh, but color and shield and in annals of mathematics. Um, 85, uh, maybe 85. Uh, that that paper is actually very readable. It is it's very well written, very clear. And along with Shailen's notes. Uh, they explain everything. Uh, yes. What's the computation of complexity of the A polynomial? What's the computation? Complexity of oh. the A polynomial. Well, it, it, it comes down to the same Grobner basis computation. It comes down to the same elimination theory. Okay, so, so, so I don't know what that means. Uh, I don't know the computation of complexity. Is it, it's exponential. I, I don't know either. But right. 
it's, 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 the, it's the same sort of Grobner basis computation, yeah. which means that yeah. we can take so a long term. Uh, there is a uh, there is a very fast program which is which is written by Mark Kull, uh, but because Snappy changed and Python changed, that program stopped working. And he, I asked him about it, and he said he's going to do a new version. I, and I will try to email him today and see if he, if he has one which he can stand or something. But if that, if that program is going to show you that program uh, tomorrow, that, that does the numerical way of computing the a polynomial. It doesn't use, it doesn't use uh, 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 the, 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 uh, uh, the, the resultants and the Grobner basis and the elimination theory. It, it uses a it uses numerical way to compute the a polynomial. Is, is all of this completely group theoretic? What's that? If I give you the not group and the peripheral subgroup. Is that sufficient? Yeah. Yeah, you, you need the yeah, you need the basis of the yeah. You need the you choose the basis. If I use something like Snappy, then I'm not just giving it the group, right? I'm giving it a space. A mark color computes it uh, using uh, not the group but using cluing and complete as equation. Okay. Which I'll try to talk about tomorrow if I get time. Is, is it computable just from the group? Yes, yes. But, but from the group, as I said, you will need to use Grobner basis. But Mark's program, which is very fast, doesn't use the group. Uh, it, it uses the gluing and the complete as equation. And it, it solves it numerically. Thanks again.